Welcome to Spotlight ETSU. I'm your host, Kenneth Medley. On today's show, we're going to be joined by Ms. Kathy Landy. She is a senior doctoral candidate here at ETSU with a focus on nature and childhood development and her dissertation is on pre-k teacher attitudes toward uh, outdoor classrooms. Ms. Kathy Landy, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. How are you? Go ahead Good, and have a thanks. seat, ma'am. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Can I go to the sleepover? I want you to promise me something. If there's any drinking, I want you to say, no thanks. Not my thing. I promise, Mom. They really do hear you. Did you pack your toothbrush? For tips on how to start the talk, visit underagedrinking. It's not just one person. It's it's a group. It's a team. Just that simple act is transforming someone else's life. It'll just make you feel so good about yourself. It's one of the best feelings in the world. First things first. I just want you to take a minute. You know, tell us all about yourself. Um, your name, where you're from, how you got into this type of work, what you've been doing in it, how long you've been in it. Well, um, I've been in um, early childhood, um, the, the early childhood program for a few years now, and I hope to graduate in May with my dissertation, as you said, on preschool teacher attitudes about outdoor education. I'm originally from New Hampshire and uh, moved down here about 30 years ago. And when my children were in uh, grade school, I had the opportunity to go with them to um, an, a field trip that, that had to do with nature and, and different things and that. And I was really interested in that. And I saw a lot how the children really shined outdoors and really were engaged in learning. Um, <clears throat> then a few years later, I uh, worked at Buffalo Mountain Camp. And it's a nature camp. And I was able to be the environmental education coordinator there and had school groups coming to learn about stream ecology. And <clears throat> again, I saw how the children really, really took to the outdoors and had a better attitude for learning outdoors. So then I decided to uh, come back to school and get my PhD in early childhood. Um, what are just some of those effects that the kids took to and what are some of the things that you saw um, right away that really motivated you to turn this into a career? Is it just, you know, every kid outside running around or was it engagement? Was it learning? Was it, you know, specific kids, every kid? Yeah, it, it was mostly every kid, but I especially um, gravitated towards the ones that the teachers thought didn't really have any potential and kind of said, no, they're not going to participate in it because they have attitude problems or behavioral problems, and um, especially ADD kids. And I saw that being outdoors in the natural environment, they really showed their true colors and were engaged in learning and it, it had hands-on experiences so they were doing things outdoors that really was uh, not possible indoors so nature was really a big part of it and so I saw this over years because I worked there for about 17 years and um, decided to come back and pursue this as a career and so now I'm working with 33 preschool uh, preschools around the Tri-Cities area that uh, want to um, help develop their outdoor classrooms to make it more natural and more uh, accommodative to all types of children. Okay. Um, do you <clears throat> have kids? Yes, I do. You I do? have a, a boy and a girl, and uh, my son is 33, and my daughter is going to be 32. But when they were growing up, they played a lot outside, and uh, they really got you know, the flavor of that. Of course, there weren't cell phones and video, there were some video games, but not that much um, at the time. But nowadays, the kids are 
so much more um, indoors. As a matter of fact, there, there's a study that um, shows approximately half of American preschool children do not have an opportunity to play outside with, you know, supervision with an adult. Um, and they spend their, in, their time indoors watching TV and playing on video games, whereas uh, in, you know, earlier times, most of the time was spent outdoors. So there wasn't this real need. So I see the need today for having the schools where kids spend most of their time as being the part to, to take this on and promoting what like was more. your school life like? Did you have a school that focused on outside? Mm -hmm. or? No, I didn't as a matter of fact. I grew up in a city and so it was asphalt and playing ball and running around and things like that um, for recess. But when I moved here, um, I felt a lot better in the outdoors and, and you know where I grew up like I said in the city um, I, I had a you know so I had a personal experience with the feeling of being this way and then seeing other other yeah. kids and how that helps and studies show that the there are benefits to the outdoors cognitively physically social socially and um, you know really kids who are uh, uh, exposed to more of the natural environment will also have the possibility of growing up with the beliefs of caring for the earth and, and being stewards of the earth. So there are a lot of things that, um, that I saw over the years that now I'm focusing on research about it. Um, what, are some, <clears throat> what are some things that you have found through personal experience growing up, raising your kids outside mm -hmm. and stuff like that, are some of those benefits. And then, if you can, segue that into what is the research found? And do your personal experiences match what the research says? Yeah, um, it, they really do. And that's why I'm, I'm so um, passionate about this subject. Uh, it, the nature-based outdoor areas really provide kids with a lot of physical activity where they can run around big open spaces, but also provide time for, you know, if they want to sit quietly under a tree and read a book or do things like that, it, it, it encompasses the whole child learning versus just, um, I find like now on traditional playgrounds where, where my children had a, you know, a yard and a tree house kind of thing and, uh, you know, climbing and the slides and stuff, but they also had the woods and the creek and uh, different areas to roam around like within the neighborhood so they had you know, uh, a lot of kids to play with and you know they they were um, pretty well rounded in that i know in some environments it's not that way you know like i said i grew up in the city so i know that there's you know just um barriers yeah, they're the, you know, barriers to get having kids going outside. So the school seems to be where I think is the safest place and kids, you know, in preschool are required to go out every day. So why not get the whole experience of learning outdoors while playing, while getting the gross motor skills and also the cognitive and, and um, health uh, social benefits. When you say uh, cognitive benefits, what cognitive benefits are there? Well, um, some of the research is showing that children are just happier outdoors, that they uh, engage more in, in more imaginative play, creative play. They, uh, they even say that um, they have better distance vision because there, you know, there are so many different areas to, you know, as in looking up at the sky, looking at the trees, looking. So there, uh, even the, the, um, the pediatric, um, American Association of Pediatrics talks about uh, better <coughs> health, health wise. Um, there are just, and there's a lot of research on that right now, uh, saying that um, the kids, you know, association with nature will help them to like I said, be more um, stewards, you know, environmental stewards. Um, they also have stronger language and problem solving skills. And it's just so it's a wide just, range. It's, so they can have um, lasting effects on into right. adulthood of yes. problem solving, critical thinking, social structure and mm -hmm. hierarchies and how to move up and down through those. Yes, or, you know, taking, taking calculated risks. <coughs> You know, we're uh, being in a, a safe, uh, you know, which is 
fine, you know, the traditional playgrounds are safety concerns and, and that's great, but <coughs> the um, benefits, <coughs> the benefits of, of being in nature outweigh the, the risks that they What are some of the risks? Well, uh, like skinning your knee like we all did when we were, when we were little, uh, climbing a tree. I mean, that's uh, one thing that just getting to that is um, Tennessee has uh, come out with the, the, ten, the Children's Outdoor Bill of Rights, and um, it's from the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. And it says, every child before entering high school should have the opportunity to climb a tree, explore nature, walk in the woods, play outside. And this is, um, you know, this is from the, the United Nations Convention. Mm -hmm. um, another study <coughs> that was uh, made by, that was done by the, um, I got all my little papers here, the U.S. Environmental Health Report says that children spend 90% of their time indoors. And I know technology is a must these days, you know, we, we must have it. But um, children also have that right to have, you know, have more of their abilities to be having the opportunity to sh you show their abilities. And um, so they have to experience both the digital world, but also the direct contact with the, the outside world. So you're saying, real fast, we're going to take a short <laughs> break here in mm -hmm. a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's more than just recess going out on a playground. It, it's grass, trees, streams, it's, stuff like that. <coughs> <coughs> it's exactly that. And um, another thing about obesity, you know, talking about obesity too, um, the research shows that for every one hour spent in front of the TV, it is, um, raises uh, the childhood obesity rate the risk for childhood obesity, 6% for every hour of TV that a child spends. 6% uh, for every 6 hour. 6% increase for every and hour. Correct me if I'm wrong, isn't there a lot of research saying we have a little bit of a childhood obesity problem in the uh, United States yes. right now? Yeah, it's an epidemic now, they said. It's really an that's epidemic. Some, uh, that's a strong, strong word uh, there, epidemic. It is, it is. So, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> The way to mitigate this epidemic that we have going on right now is just going outside and playing. It's going outside and playing and uh, having more than just the traditional slide and swing kind of thing. It's running around, playing the games, uh, building things, building things with blocks, even with sticks and you know tree limbs and jumping over logs, just different things and where I'm talking about a risk that may be a little bit. Hold that thought. We're going to come right back in a minute and we're going to pick it up right there. Thank you for joining us at Spotlight ETSU. So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to out-fraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. I know. Where are you headed? Uh, I'm just gonna hang out. If any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promised your dad you wouldn't. I promise. Love you too, Dad. They really do hear you. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa. Welcome back to Spotlight ETSU. We're joined here today with Miss Kathy Landy. She's a doctoral candidate here at ETSU. Um, she's going to be graduating in December or May, so it'll be Dr. Kathy Landy here pretty soon. We've been talking about uh, her research and what she's been doing. It's the study of nature and the effects on childhood development and teacher <laughs> attitudes toward um, outdoor classrooms, specifically pre-K. Um, we've gone over some things, uh, basically that 
nature can curb, you know, effects of ADD, ADHD, childhood obesity. There's obvious, you know, cardiovascular benefits mm -hmm. um, and many, many different um, areas that nature has seemed to really, what's the word, counteract some of the negative effects yes. that we've been having in our society. Mm -hmm. uh, people wondering why, you know, children aren't paying attention in schools mm -hmm. and they're wondering, we have these sale of fidget spinners and <laughs> all this stuff to keep children occupied, but right. you're telling me that go outside, give them a leaf, and it's better than a fidget spinner. Is that, is that, that what you're is saying? That is the perfect thing. <laughs> give them a leaf, yes. Um, well, uh, one of the things that we were talking about, about the ADD situation, um, studies show that green outdoor spaces help kids with ADD to come back and, you know, when they come back in the classroom to have better focus and more concentration. Um, and they, the, but they have to have a regular connection with nature. It's not just a field trip once a year, which field trips are going away anyway. Um, it has to be a consistent, so, you know, the, to, to get the effects of, of um, you know, now, the symptoms reduce. Right before the break, sorry, mm -hmm. I didn't mean no, to interrupt you okay. there. Right before the break, we were talking about it. And the type of engagement, it's not just um, swings and slides, the mm -hmm. playground. What type of engagement is it? It's more having um, loose parts, natural materials, like, like we all had when we were growing up, pine cones and acorns and sticks. And, you know, they could be different things each day. You know, one day a stick will be a, a wand, another day a stick will be part of a building that somebody's constructing, a teepee. Um, they sit on a log, and one day it could be a train, another day it could be just, you know, a log that they want to stand on and, and kind of um, balance on, so it helps their balancing skills. So uh, the natural materials are the things that um, are, are much better than just mm -hmm. the plastic closed-ended toys. You know, they're not so open-ended. They don't help the imagination. They're just for one thing only. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, why do you think that we've had this backslide in it? Um, I know when you and I have talked about this before, uh, we talked about how there was a push for this a little mm -hmm. bit in the 90s, <laughs> and then it went away. Why, why do you think that right. is? Right. I think, um, well, I believe that the, the No Child Left Behind Act um, kind of pushed teachers to teach to the test, and everybody's thought was that the more time they spent behind the desk and doing paperwork, you know, the smarter they would become. But now reach, research is showing, especially with having these uh, increases in antidepressants in preschoolers, I mean, to even have that, uh, you know, anti-anxiety drugs and, and ADHD uh, medications. Um, the studies are showing that just having uh, even a 15-minute outdoor connection with the natural world, not just sliding on a slide and swing, but connecting with plants or animals or insects, um, you know, building things outside, it, it has a better effect than, than these medications. And so, um, you know, I know parents are, are busy and it's hard to get that done when they come home from work and, you know, kids got homework and, you know, to concentrate on that. But... Um, you know, 15 minutes a day in the outdoors. Is let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Your dissertation specifically mm -hmm. is on the pre-K attitudes. What are some of the things that you have found at that pre-K level and the teacher attitudes in your research? I found that the teacher's attitudes were pretty high on their um, wanting, wanting this outdoor education and, and knowing the benefits of um, having the kids go outdoors. But they talk about like maybe the higher up the administration or you know the school board or, or, or things like that that have them more teaching to the test than uh, seeing the benefits of learning outdoors where I'm trying to promote um, with these studies that have shown that that you know the benefits um, that really little things can be done even on any playground just planting a garden and having the kids see it seasonally, you know. Now, and, do we and see bugs. some of that around, like in, in schools? I, I found and about 25% places? of the schools in um, the Tri Cities areas have 
somewhat of some natural things on the outdoors, but what about right here on ETSU? ETSU, it, it, um, Little Bucks and Child Study Center are both awesome. They really yeah. have the, you know, the natural materials. And I know some people look at it and say, why don't they have the regular slide and swing? But they're, they don't understand that they are learning and through their play and their imagination and, and um, mud pies and different, you know, they have a mud kitchen and, um, the things we used to do when we were younger were really yeah, valuable, yeah, you know, yeah. and, you know, when it, when it came to all these plastic things, um, it just doesn't, doesn't work as well. What can, um, what can parents and policymakers and teachers do to actually help some of this stuff? Like, you know, could parents not be afraid to let teachers take their kids outside? Right, I, I know there's that kind of thing too, like little Johnny has allergies and can't go outside or things like that, but they're, they're showing that um, things that are in the environment really help to alleviate. Uh, if they get started when they're younger, they're more apt to have a better immune system and not so allergic to things. Um, so that has to be you know, looked at in you know, case by case, I suppose, but uh, you know, if something, you know, if they're allergic to bees or, or something like that, you know, they have to have an EpiPen. But um, they, they lose all that, you know, natural play if they don't get to go outdoors. Mm -hmm. And they should get outdoors early. Um, so tell me a little bit more. I want to get into your history a little bit more. Um, what okay. are some of the projects that you've been involved with here? Um, I know you were talking about the uh, clean streams or? Yes. Um, right now I work for the Upper Tennessee River Roundtable in Abingdon and I am the Southwest Virginia uh, Save Our Streams Coordinator. So I take school groups like third, fourth, fifth, even high school students out into the streams to um, learn about the critters that live in the streams and uh, some of them adopt the stream and have a little sign up there saying the stream adopted by specific school and they clean the stream twice a year and then they get um, they go and look at what little critters live in the stream and then they have a connection to the stream and mm -hmm. then they want to keep it clean and then and you know and but it's also good for data that the math and science classes could use for yearly um, yearly things so I'm doing that with a, a couple of schools here in Tennessee now has that inspired any of these children to maybe go home and clean up a stream near their house? And well, a when more I do involved? these activities with the kids, they love it and they really and they're you know, kids are, are really inquisitive and curious and that's where the scientific um, inquiry starts when they're when they're in preschool, but it continues on and I find that, you know, that they're really they and they provide data that is good for the um, you know, the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation or Department of Environmental Quality up in Virginia. They really, um, and they're really engaged. So that's a, that's maybe, a positive. Do you think it maybe could lead to uh, career fields that mm -hmm. better help the communities that these children maybe are growing up in? Yeah, because right now we're losing generations of kids being outside. And so where are we going to get those next environmental stewards? I, I'm familiar with a lot of older people who are even retired who are still in the environmental, but I don't see a lot of younger ones. So, um, and by not connecting with the outdoors, why are they going to care to save it? You know, mm -hmm. they, if they don't love something, they, they won't really now, is, um, bother with it. Is this research limited to children, or can adults maybe mm -hmm. use some of this stuff? Um, yeah, uh, there was one um, research showing that uh, even a 20-minute walk in the park can increase, you, you know, uh, uh, decrease stress, increase attention and focus versus a 20-minute walk downtown. So green spaces for adults too alleviate the stress and anxiety. So that's so a, that the kids and the adults going out together. Can when you're stressed out over your uh, thesis <laughs> and your dissertation, you take a nice walk outside. I sit on my screen porch with my cat. Yeah, <laughs> get outside a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's something that maybe you know other students can do here yeah. on campus. Just sit Finals out under week, a tree go take for a little walk. 
go go under a tree and study. And I, I that's where I study outside. I think um, ETSU has a wonderful outdoor recreation program mm -hmm. here over at the CPA, and I know they have a lot of discounted trips, kayaking, mountain biking. Yes. Um, what about taking kids on stuff like that, mountain biking? Yeah, kayaking. and and all those outdoor activities like on ATVs and and things like that are good, but. You know, the motorized... No, no, mountain biking. Oh, like mountain biking, pedaling. right. That's pedaling. That's good activity and out there. And then when you take a break, you just look around and see what you got. And then you've got the beauty of, you know, where you are in, mm -hmm. the, in the forest and stuff. So that is really, that's a really good thing. What yeah. are um, some publications that you may recommend to somebody looking for some stuff on this? Um, well, one, I, I brought a couple books with me. Um, Last Child in the Woods by Richard Louvre is what got me started in going into this, um, this field because he uh, asked a child, a fourth grader one time, what do you like better, playing inside or outside? And he said, I like playing inside because that's where all the outlets are. And it was <laughs> like, what is going on? So he coined the phrase nature deficit disorder, which has to do with children's disconnection that's, with nature. Yeah, that was a... Uh, uh, term that I actually found in my research while I was reading this. Anything else you got? Um, and I have, you know, for anybody who, like teachers or even parents can look up um, this book by Rusty Keeler, Natural Playscapes, mm -hmm. and then this other book, Cultivating Outdoor Classrooms for Teachers to just providing, you know, some kind of uh, natural materials into their outdoors. So these are these are three books that I usually go back to. Right, I brought with. some uh, magazines with me today. It's Outside Magazine and a few others that I, you know, prescribe to. And Kathy, last word? Um, get them outside. All right. Thank you all for joining us at Spotlight ETSU. I'm your host, Kenneth Medley. <laughs> I'm a retired school psychologist and helping people was my thing. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have Meals on Wheels. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. Meals on Wheels, coming to my door as someone who's housebound, having someone check on me, assures me that I'm not forgotten. Meals on Wheels has given me a mode of freedom that I wouldn't have otherwise. We are the clients. We are the clients. We are the clients of Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. It's not just one person, it's, it's a group, it's a team. Just that simple act is transforming someone else's life. It'll just make you feel so good about yourself. It's one of the best feelings in the world. Can I go to the sleepover? I want you to promise me something. If there's any drinking, I want you...